This is another lamp collection video. This or another part of my lamp collection. These are the more interesting remainder of the incandescent lamps and compact fluorescent lamps and some LED stuff. This is a 68 watt technical consumer products uh, compact fluorescent lamp marketed as being equivalent to a, six, to a 300 watt incandescent lamp but you can see both from the size the only one it is similar to is in size is the 300 watt uh, Westinghouse this is probably 1950s, 1960s, 1970s uh, Westinghouse marked for uh, New York City Transit Authority on the uh, edge there Uh, this is uh, even smaller than this. This is a uh, PS30 Mexican-made, uh, either February 1998 or February 2008, uh, 300 watt lamp. This is a General Electric uh, A25 on um, lamp. You can see that's the smallest of them. You can see that that one at 130 volts, because it's a 130 volt lamp, is good. For 6,120 lumens, my amp is 400 is is 4,200 lumens, and when I tested it, it's only a 61 watt lamp, so probably under 4,000 lumens. So more lying in that regard. This is a 5 watt preheat uh, fluorescent adapter with an interesting uh, anti-reusing incandescent lamps feature in the form of one of these. Fuse lockout adapters. This one only allows you to use a 7 ampere to 15 ampere fuse, which would be annoying because if this burns up, uncommon with the uh, preheat chokes, but it can happen. If this burns out and you don't have a spare, and because the actual ballast is putted in there with loads of the uh, silicone adhesive, it's not really easy to do. You wouldn't be able to. Uh, you have to replace the fixture or the lamp holder if it was replaceable. You can see there I've just filed off the uh, retention pins of this will unscrew. Although sometimes you have to make this bit will unscrew and then you have to manually unscrew this. Which is annoying. It's kind of a... Also it's got a uh, 1994 vintage um, Ashram Sylvania lamp but it came in an Ashram box so they went there to stock of these left over following the 1993 buyout of, uh, of uh, GTE Sylvania's lamp division by Asram. This is the modern equivalent of that. It's a uh, GU24 badge. One of the many stupid things that come out of the environmental movement with regards to uh, lighting because it means that you can't use medium screw base lamps. So when it dies out and, this thing t and these things turn out to be the hideously dangerous fire hazards that they are, there's going to be a whole lot of infrastructure that's going to need to be scrapped in order to be able to reuse proper lamps again. You can see there's an example of the G24 lamp holder there. This is a uh, couple of years old uh, Chinese made Ashram Sylvania branded uh, night light lamp. See a switch on the side and down in there there's a pair of T1 white LEDs. This switch turns on the uh, uh, fluorescent part of it. The LEDs are always running if the lamp has electricity supplied to it. This is a Philips uh, LED lamp. It's one of the new ones where they have the, uh, see that kind of a yellowy bit there, is the plastic diffuser surrounding blue LEDs and that yellow is because of the yttrium aluminum garnet phosphor that they use because that's yellow. And you can see that little black bit. That's because the native color of, this pla of the plastic base is black because they use a lot of graphite in the plastic so it will conduct heat, but nowhere near as good as metal. So, But that black is the native color of it. This is something similar. This is domestically made, actually. This is made by a company down in Florida carrying the Home Cheapo mosquitoes. Home Cheapo EcoSmart branding. These are LED lamps. Problem with these and the Chinese one is that these guys operate at over 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So, for all those saying how cool running LEDs are, they aren't. It's actually too hot to touch in operation. I only use them outside in winter when it's bloody cold. This is a one and a half watt 
marked at a color temperature of 5400 Rankine, uh, which is similar to the Kelvin scale in that it starts at uh, absolute zero, except it uses a Fahrenheit size degree instead of a centigrade size degree. This got on clearance from bulbs.com for buck ninety nine because it'll load them. And those are actually halfway decent. Uh, these are this is a nineteen late nineteen forties, nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties light mate, very early compact fluorescent lamp with a manual preheat starter because you couldn't fit a glow bottle in there, and it's associated lamp holder and can and everything. September two thousand one vintage Mexican made. Uh, Phillips Marathon lamp, 34, 34 watts. This guy is bloody hot because it uh, operates at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit near the uh, base where electrode cathode fall causes a lot of heating there. Uh, January 1991, or January 1990 vintage uh, Ashram, Sylvania lamp, made in there, made in New York facility. Uh, Ashram, Sylvania, branded, uh, Chinese made, twist and dim helicrap fluorescent lamp. And then just up here, this is a 1920s, early 1930s, uh, uh, PS52 envelope, champion lamp with a mechanical base, held in place with a little uh, uh, brass wrapping and uh, little asbestos pads to cushion the envelope, because they didn't have adhesive basing cement technology hadn't gotten to the point where you could use it on lamps running this hot and this is a PS52 thousand watt lamp likely from dating from I think the 1960s through possibly the early 1990s because there is no remains of any etch whatsoever on the lamp and there's nothing in the uh, stem press there because sometimes there's things on there that's how I date some of my Mazda lamps that's a cat. We've got lots of them. Only three, but it seems like a lot because they're weird. Uh, and there's no marking on the ba base. And an international telegraph phone and telegraph. 823 envelope. 150 watt extended service lamp. Another flea market find. And this last but last and least because it's Lights of America. This is one of their wedding cake-ish looking LED reflector lamps. Really kind of crappy construction because it's Lights of America, which sucks. They say they're domestically made, but most likely what they do is they may mold things like the parts here, or they may just have imported parts assemblies, and they're just assembled here so they can call it domestic made. So there's the crappy capacitive current limiting type ballast, which is very bad because you've got a very high current peak at the start of each part of the cycle, both the... Uh, positive and the negative side when you're coming off of the zero cross. So you get very high peaking current, which is not very good for uh, uh, LED longevity. You can just filtering capacitor. What it does is those LEDs are driven off of a uh, grade spread there and some current limiting resistors because there's three different LED circuits in here. That's just the filter cap after the grade, grip, grade bridge and that's a heat shrink wrapped fuse. One good thing for it is that it actually has a proper fuse instead of the fuse resistor which isn't an actual fuse that many compact fluorescent lamps have. So if you ever see something where in the side of the ballast casing there's a hole being burnt by some red glowing component because I've seen some YouTube videos on failure of that. It's an overcurrent fault in the ballast causing the fuse resistor to overheat because power dissipated is equal to the square of the current times the resistance, so double the current, increase the power dissipated by a factor of four.